In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, it is so good that we can be together once again. And uh, although sometimes in these late days of August and early days of September, and especially since this is a holiday weekend, we sometimes don't know how many of us will find time and be here. It is so touching to see so many of you and we send a special greetings to all those brothers and sisters who are joining us online. What a week it was. We had a couple of our own Hillsdale miracles, including the fact that we are here in a clean and dry church. And I really mean it, the morning after the hurricane, early in the morning when I got up and walked to the back parking lot, the water went all the way to the edge of those back doors. And then it stopped and retrieved. So just an incredible miracle for us, for the parish that we can be here in our beautiful church for our community and for uh, many of those of us who were so concerned how it is going to look like once the Ida passes to our area. But at the same time, we pray for all of our brothers and sisters who have been in any way affected, those who lost their lives or those who struggle during these days. And that is why it's so good that we do come here to the Lord to the gear of life, to the healer, to the one who strengthens us, and the one who sustains us each and every day. So as we have gathered once again to listen to him and to be nourished by his very body, let us once again declare our dependence on him in good times and in bad, and with confidence in God's compassion and his never-ending mercy. Let us pause to call mind our sins and ask for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to save us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, who chose the poor to be heirs to your kingdom, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you opened the eyes of the blind and the ears of the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth.
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive the true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith 
in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephaphata, this is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the one he ordered them not to, the more, but the more he ordered them, them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, 
couple of weeks ago, one of our parishioners, a mother of a future groom or husband, whose son was about to get married in uh, one of the beautiful churches down the shore, came to the office. And uh, I was there alone at that time, so I asked her how I can help. And she said, my son cannot come. Would you be so kind to help me? We need his baptismal certificate. He's getting married. So I asked, when was he baptized? And uh, she gave me the day. And I said, do you realize that today is actually the 29th anniversary of the baptism of your son? And she said, yes, Father, but that's not all. So I asked, tell me the rest of the story. And they said, she said, a couple days prior, they started planning the final paperwork for this wedding. And they realized that both him, David, and Caroline, his future wife, were baptized on the same day in the same church at St. John the Baptist in Hillsdale. I thought it was unbelievable. Two young people meet at the other part of the country and then they start tracing the story of their lives and it comes to them being held by their parents in front of this altar and to be baptized on the same day. So they started digging for the pictures and realized that, yeah, actually they were there, here, standing next to each other. Since then I had a chance to speak not only with David, but with both uh, David's and Caroline's mom, and we wish them all the best as they are about to be married during these days. And I obviously ask for their permission to share this very touching story. Because I said there will be a, a moment on Sunday when this will be so proper to use this story about God's providence. And that Sunday came much earlier than I expected because if we look into our lives, dear brothers and sisters, and we look into what happened during this past week with Ida and all the uncertainties. And if we look a few days ahead, as we'll be celebrating the 20th anniversary of 9-11, we often go in our lives to those situations and moments when we somehow feel that God lost control. We ask, where is God? And then the stories like Caroline's and David's, or millions of other stories that we can share. In fact, we can be here for days and would come up with our own personal stories about those moments in our lives when we were absolutely certain that there was God's providence in that moment, that somehow he has led us, that he showed us the way and he continues to be with us each and every day. And yes, we have to humbly admit that we are people of faith, that we are like those who at times confused and hurting and not sure were running to Jesus in his own time 2,000 years ago, but those who walked out victorious out of those encounters were those who approached him with their faith and total trust. And today's story from the gospel is one of them. A man who had no chance, deaf, not able to hear, speak, and suddenly he's opening his ears in a divine act that has no explanation. We can come up with our own personal stories, dear brothers and sisters, and I know that if we are truly sincere, we would, we would find them, that we do in those moments truly feel that God is so, so very close to us. But a question for you and for me is, 
So what do we do with the rest of our lives? How do we fill that time in between those spectacular moments when we feel God's closeness? What do we do in the times of struggles and difficulties? What is our answer when we encounter human suffering or when we have questions in our lives? And as many times, saints have told us in those moments there are only two kind of directions we can walk or run in either direction far away from God, Jesus, or closer and closer to him. And that is why our gathering today, once again, dear brothers and sisters, is so very special. Because we came to listen to the word of God, to be strengthened by that reassurance that we can find throughout the centuries and millennia in the stories of the scriptures, the Bible, and the stories of those who followed God. We come to receive the Eucharist and be strengthened by this very special sacrament so that we can go and fill with our trust and our faith and our knowledge that God will be close to us even this week as he has ever been, that we can go and be those disciples who can, with prophet Isaiah, pronounce this week once again, despite all that will be happening around us, despite all the sad memories of these past days or during this week of what happened 20 years ago or during the time since, that we can be those disciples who come here and once again proclaim and be strengthened by this community of faith and say, the same words that we heard in the prophet Isaiah in the first reading of today. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Let us, dear brothers and sisters, during this Mass, once again, give thanks and praise to Almighty God for many of his blessings. There is a, one of the advices in his spiritual direction that never we should look too far ahead or back, that the present moment is the greatest gift. Past is gone and future is maybe uncertain, but we have the present moment. But every time when we encounter times of difficulties and struggles and questions, when we have to give some answer to human suffering or to the moments when things just don't go exactly right, I remind myself and I say that to those who ask me that the good Lord in those moments really want to look us back. He wants us to stop for a moment and look back from the moment of our birth to the moment of our baptism, to the moments when we receive the sacraments for the first time and have gone through so many special moments in our lives. If we look back, we'll be able to find in our own lives the clear traces of Almighty God in the situations, in people, and in the moments of our lives. So let us try to do it once again today and this week. Let us go back in our memories and reassure ourselves that our God is loving God, that we came into this world with his love and purpose, and that once again, as he has guided us today, he's reassuring us with those beautiful words. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes even today with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you, us, dear brothers and sisters, each and every one of us. Amen.
I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate by the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered dead and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We trust in God's desire to lead us to fullness of life in his presence. Let us place before him our needs and the needs of others. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That all members of the church will have open ears to hear God and open mouths to bear witness to God's healing presence and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may attend to the growing divide between the rich and the poor and seek to create a society where all might thrive, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this parish community may entrust God with all our fears and anxieties so as to live in the peace of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have suffered the effects of Hurricane Ida will receive the help they need and be restored to health, peace, and security, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we grow in awareness of all God's creation and our responsibility to it, and to, the, and to thank God for the gifts that we receive from God through it, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all in need of physical or mental healing will experience God's restorative presence through caring health professionals, especially in this pandemic, especially for Kathleen Mueller, Irene Mowry, Tim Baer, Michelle Kulik, Sherry Nowlin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died will be restored to life in Christ, especially Maureen Keogh, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Richard Makowski, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Healing God, you respond to our cries and you make us whole. Hear these prayers we bring before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Forsaken, gather us in 
the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to a whole human race. Gather us in, the rich and the haughty, gather us in, the proud and the strong. Give us a heart, so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering you may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. indeed holy o lord the founder of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Richard, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he who was united with your son in that like his may be also one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles, Saint John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we hit him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter in my room, but only say the word to my soul.
That your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, to the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may marry an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. There's really only one announcement, more an invitation regarding what we'll do uh, next Saturday for September 11. But before that, uh, I just wanted to uh, give you a little information about the roof and where we are with our post-hail uh, uh, situation. But the greatest news is that that roof was that July 8 hail that came really hard, uh, uh, has about 300 patches that were done professionally to keep everything safe. And uh, uh, we survived that incredible rain of, of Ida of last few days. So I will give you more information uh, since many of our parishioners are traveling and not with us this weekend, are still out with their families and loved ones uh, next week about where we are, but we are continuing to be in touch with the Archdiocese, with our adjusters, and make sure that this project, when we embark, will be completed and uh, will lead also to major improvements for all of us. But then one announcement is more an invitation uh, for all of you and those who are following us and all of our parishioners uh, and also brothers and sisters from our borough and from surrounding towns to come and join us next Saturday at 4.30. Uh, as you know, next weekend will be also the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And since it is Saturday, very mindful of your own personal schedule, we didn't want to do any type of service in the middle of the day, but we'll do it at 4.30. 
before the five o'clock mass, we'll gather, we'll pray, we'll remember all those who lost their lives, their families, but also we want to remember and acknowledge all those who continue to serve us faithfully in our community, in our parish, and those who are giving their lives each and every day for our well-being and for our safety. So that will be next Saturday for 30 to 5 o'clock, and then we'll be following that celebration or that remembrance, I should say, with the uh, 5 o'clock Mass and include all those who will be praying for in the intentions of that Mass. Once again, thank you for being here. You will find more information about all of this in the bulletin and in the insert. May this week be filled with many world's blessings and that certain knowledge that God's love and providence is with us each and every moment of our lives. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. The final song is Amazing Grace, and if you stay, we'll sing Happy Birthday to Father Peter after the final hymn. Thank you.